Talk Radio. All right, actually, we're getting closer to uh, Christmas here. In fact, last week we had our uh, Christmas special. All right. And it's really special because here we are in Florida where it's like 80 degrees. And it's kind of hard to feel Christmassy. So one of the things I picked up off the Internet was a, uh, a little blog that I saw where they said that Antarctica had their coldest temperature ever recorded on planet Earth. It was minus 100 35.3 degrees. What I want to know is who was the poor bastard standing out there taking the temperature because the guy must have froze solid. I mean, they said it's so cold at that temperature that even breathing could kill you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if you look at all the newscasts when they're talking about the weather right now, they're having colder weather right now than they normally have in winter. Yeah. Across the board in, in the Midwest and so well, on. Well, most so places in the country, we're, we're the one holdout, you know, down here in Florida. Well, like when we went to Orlando, it was like, it yeah. was like summer, it was it was, like 89 yeah. degrees or something. <laughs> yeah, sp speaking of cold, uh, the NSA's at it again. Yeah. And, you know, it's not enough for them to be, you know, tapping into the computers and grabbing up, sucking up all the, the cell phone traffic and everything. But you know how well they've gone? They're actually looking for terrorists on wor World of Warcraft. They're actually going into Xbox Live, <laughs> actually <laughs> breaching the security of these gaming sites to, to look for terrorists. Yeah, you know, they don't really know what to do. I mean, when you have lots of money and you don't have enough time to do stuff, they have to come up with something. So, uh, so I'll so, tell you that some of the weird, weird things that have happened this year in tw you know 2013. But what we're going to be talking about in this episode is we're going to talk about our predictions for 2014. And my first prediction is somebody needs to put a leash on the NSA. That's the yeah. first thing. Well, you know, it, it, Obama's talking about it, but he's really he talks out of two sides of his you know face all the time. So let's uh, let's give our listeners uh, the phone number to call in so those out there in uh, cyber world can dial us up. It's two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. That's two one three nine four three three eight zero eight. Of course, you can always find us on Facebook. Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube, Working the Web to Win, W Square Media Group, uh, Club W Cube, Social Slam Dunk, and probably three or four others. Yeah, we're, we're definitely easy to find. <laughs> so anyway, you know, when we start talking about predictions and internet marketing, uh, one of the really things that I really wanted to point out was we've been talking about content marketing going on about three years now. We've been saying that... Before really, it was cool. Right, before it was mm -hmm. cool. I mean, Google has always said content is very important and so on. And, but back then, people were still trying to game the system. It was the primary way you tried to get position was gaming in some way. Mm -hmm. You tried to use server farms. Keyword stuffing. Keyword stuffing. Right. You know, some kind of way to game the system to get, to get on page one. And back then, we said, you know, it would really be really great if we could just say, okay, well, if we had really good content and we did it all right, mm -hmm. we can get on page one. Well, now you read in Forbes magazine and market advertising uh, media and all these other places where they're saying the headline is content marketing will be bigger than ever. Content <laughs> marketing is king. Content marketing is the most important thing. And again, we've been saying that for how long now? Again, three years. So finally, I'm glad to see that content marketing is getting the respect that it deserves. And the techniques that we use to give you that multimedia rich content marketing approach yeah. It's no, it's no longer the Rodney Dangerfield of right. the Internet. It's no longer the Rodney Dangerfield. And for those of you who are too young to know who Rodney Dangerfield is, Google him. That's right, Google him. <laughs> oh, yes. no, anyway, you don't get no respect. That's the main thing I really wanted to knock out there because, again, that's been something we've been talking about. Yeah. People would still be saying SEO this and SEO that, and it's really sort of, you know, it doesn't really make any sense that they'd be saying those kinds of things. So. Well, we don't even call it SEO anymore. We call it SEM, search right. engine marketing, because, you know, optimization really only deals with the website itself. And right. as we've been pointing out for the, about the past two years, it's comprising less and less of the overall scheme of things. When the bots come around now, that's only about 25% of what they're looking at is what's on your site. Right. It's all the other stuff that gets its attention, you know, your blogs, your videos, your podcasts, your social networking. And, and, and the other thing we always tell people is it's not enough to have that little F or the T on your site, right. you got to feed it. Well, you know, having them there and not using them is almost as bad as not having them at all. Hmm. So that's one of the biggest problems. And, you know, talking about what's going to happen, you know, if Google sneezes or sniffs or does anything, right. it's going to make major effects in the markets in general. Because, again, they own 81, 83% of search, or depending on who, how you say it. And not only that, they own a huge portion of the pay-per-click market. Mm-hmm. And they have a huge portion of the social market. That's right. And they have the bulk of the video market. So, you know, if they're doing something, 
it's going to make a big difference. And one of the things that I know will happen for sure is that they will continue to consolidate their services and they will be wrapped around Google Plus primarily. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see different changes happening in, in the search market itself. I really believe that this will be the first year that they'll finally start putting videos in pay-per-click. Mm -hmm. That'll be sort of a new thing that, that they've been wanting to do for a while. They can do it inside the the network right. display ads, you know, those kinds of things. But uh, they've been trying to do it in search for a while, and I think it's going to finally happen. I think um, the consolidation is a big deal because the more they consolidate it, the more they force people to use Google Plus and their other products in there. And, right. and again, that's going to have a major impact on its competitors like Yahoo and Bing, which are really... They're not making any headway. Right. They're, they're losing ground, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact. It's just sort of crazy. Yeah. And I think that will continue to happen until Bing well, and Yahoo realize mm -hmm. that they got to provide more value. That's right. Or, Can't keep doing the same right. old, same old. Yeah, and you what? Because what you know, it's you know, it's really is becoming king now is cross-platform marketing. Right. You know, and obviously when you got Google, Google is is very well set up to do that because you know they they own Android, they own right. YouTube. Right. You know, there's a bunch of, they own Blogger, so doing cross-marketing, or cross-platform marketing right. is built into the system, right. where a lot of these other guys, they, they still don't get it. All right, just like in the social nets, I mean, Facebook doesn't own all these right. other different platforms. They own a couple now, but they don't own all these other different platforms. Yahoo does have several different platforms that mm -hmm. they own, but they're not utilizing very well. If they were smart, what they would really do is they'd use the old Microsoft trick, is like give it away for a while. Right. Until you get position, you know. Exactly, get market share. <laughs> yeah, and right. what, what they want to bring back is not pay-per-click, but pay-per-acquisition. Absolutely. If they would do that, they would be garnering a big chunk of business mm -hmm. very quickly. And last year, we thought that they were going to do that for a while because they came out with that scratch and sniff thing that really didn't fly. When you tried to follow it, there was really nothing there. Right. But, um... Again, if Bing or Yahoo would do that, I think they would make some big inroads very quickly. Well, in fact, that's about the only thing that, that could really hurt Google right. because, you know, pay-per-click, of course, doesn't mean anything but a click. doesn't mean they're going to act. doesn't mean they're going to buy. Right. They can just go boink and, you know, cha-ching. Well, Microsoft, you know, they were talking uh, last week, we talked about it on the show a little bit mm -hmm. where they were saying how Google spies and everybody, unless there's a major backlash on the whole Google, you know, tracking these stuff, mm -hmm. I don't see that going to be a major problem. And, and it's really sort of hard when the kettle's calling everybody else, you know, black when because Microsoft spies on everything that you do, just about. We were just talking about the new Xbox. Right. That you got to log in to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. Why do they need you to log in to be able to use it? Mm -hmm. and so, so I think those are big deals. Watching Google continue to consolidate will make a major impact uh, on the industry in general. And speaking of the industry in general, have you noticed that this year will probably be the first time that people get most of their news from the Internet? versus TV mm -hmm. and radio and newspaper, magazines and so on. And all of those analog devices are sniffing around the, the drain watching the comet come to take them out. You know? Right. Because <laughs> they'll be going away. I mean, every major TV station now has their own internet station. Mm -hmm. uh, every major newspaper the same way. And the subscriptions for their online uh, sales are going up where there's their analog subscriptions are going away I, a lot of people still wake up and go watch the news on TV and right. so on, but a lot of that's changing because again with people buying smart TVs instead of regular TVs and all that kind of stuff so they can get their news people really are looking to use their e-tablets and and their even their smartphones mm -hmm. to get news versus watching TV and one of the things that people are really addicted to is the whole concept of on demand. Right. I want it when I want it, not when I got to sit at the six mm -hmm. o'clock news and watch it and so on. And that's that's what's driving the whole change from analog world to the digital world because the digital world is on demand and the analog world is scheduled. Right. So I see that uh, changing, and we know that the prediction is that will that the number will cross somewhere in February, where people will get most of the news off the internet and not on. Uh, yeah, one of the other things we're seeing a big shift is, of course, e-tail. Yeah. Uh, was this, this is the first year where e-tail beat retail. Yeah. And uh, that uh, trend is just going to keep on going up, you know. And, and now a lot of retailers are trying to figure out a way to compete head-to-head -head with the retailers. Because obviously the one thing you can do when you walk into a store that you can't do with any e-tailers, you can walk out with whatever the product, in your product that you wanted to purchase. 
Well, you heard about uh, Amazon coming up with the idea for the drones, and now Google's starting to float the idea of, of having their autonomous vehicles with right. robotic delivery drivers. Right. <laughs> so it's just like anything else. It's what sounds what sounds really out there eventually will come to pass. And in fact, yeah. speaking of that, uh, one of the things that I found when I was doing some research on this topic today, I decided, you know, anybody can predict a year or even two years into the future. Right. But let's see if we can find somebody who's really got some staying power, who's really willing to take a flyer out there and predict, say, 40 or 50 years in the future. And actually, I found somebody that actually did that, yeah. the uh, sci-fi writer, Isaac. Isaac Asimov, right? Back in 1964, made a number of predictions about the year 2014. And one of the ones that he predicted, which was pretty darn close considering the 50-year span, is he predicted that by the year 2014, the population in the U.S. would increase to 350 million people, and, and the actual population today is closer to 317 million. Right. But even more astounding was he said there'd be 6.5 billion people on, on the, the planet, planet right. and he's only off by about a half a billion, which right. sounds like a big number, but it really isn't when you consider the scheme of things. Well, when you consider there were maybe a billion back then. Right. You know, so... You know, so uh, he also said on. he also said that communications will become, especially telephone communications would, would come through where you'd be watching picture phones. You know, right. and and now anybody who has one of these right any cell has, phone has that it. capability. Um, he also said that it's well my favorite when he says the world of 2014 will have few routine jobs that can't be done better I by some that. machine rather than by a human being, and you know, now you've seen things like you know Baxter and things like that, where robotics are, are becoming more and more ubiquitous. And I see that this is going to be a trend that's going to not only continue, but the his other prediction were that mankind will therefore become largely a race of mechan a machine tenders. Well, see if we can get Nash to put a couple of robots in our place and yeah, next have them make them lap clap their their gums for us and stuff like right, that. There you go. <laughs> Send in the clones. Send on the clones, <laughs> That's what right? You wish for. <laughs> Instead of the clones, we'll just send in the automatons. You know, I can't think. Your uh, avatar. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of automation, one of the things that's, that's really going to beef up in 2014 is that we're now coming into round two of the automation products for for internet marketing. Right. So you got Focuses 2.0, and you got uh, Wildfire 2.0, mm -hmm. and so on. You got HubSpot's the new products, and it, it allows you know, agencies and so on to do a lot more automation, but there are also automation products that are becoming mainstream like Hootsuite and so on for the average person who wants to do social media automation and so on. So those are some pretty cool things that are coming out and that'll be a, a big thing. And you'll see a lot more adoption in 2014. 2015, 2016, you'll probably see versions 3.0 that really hop it up a big jump. So, but that's going to make a big difference for a lot of people especially people like me who have to deal with social media, which is the never-ending monster that needs to be fed all the time. Um, Feed me, Seymour. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just like the, the, the online little shop of horrors. Don't, don't forget the little... Uh, <laughs> that'd be a good picture to have if you put it on the, on the show. Um, mobile's taking off, and I think... I remember last year talking about this. We were talking about mobile, and people aren't making their mobile sites yet and all that kind of stuff. Well, this year, people are starting to make their mobile sites. Right. And... One of the things that happened during this year was Blogger actually came out with an automated portion. So if you went and made your blog, it automatically made a, a mobile, mobable version, version right. for you. Well, even, even uh, what do you call it, HTML5 now yeah. will scale right. the site down all the way down to a cell phone size. Right. But the biggest problem with a lot of this stuff is again, yeah, you've got a lot of verbiage content. you, can't, you right. can't read right. it. You you know. too, uh, that's why we, we tell people, because if you're going to create a Mobi site, it, you wanted to have it mostly video driven right. because it, even myself, it's like you know, if I have to sit there and read this thing, it's it's not right. going to happen. You're right. you're definitely going to lose some sales there. Right. And and mobile sales are up, and a lot of that has to do with people are addicted to their cell phones and they're using them like they. Well, you know what the funny thing is, you know, everybody's out there. They got to have I got to have my big screen TV, but yet when it comes to this right. stuff, they keep getting smaller and smaller. Now they got screens that are the size of your watch, that are right. watches, and you know, it's like I can't go there. Yeah. I can barely deal with this. And when we talk about our tech tech predictions for 2014, we'll talk about all the new oh. active wear. Because I mean, to have. make to make a practical uh, iPhone for you know iWatch for me, it would have to be the size of, of you know of a standard right. uh, smartphone, and that's just too freaking big. Right. Anything smaller than that is just not and worth and my it's while. And probably a good ten years away. They have this new film that you can actually put information on. It's almost like 
an electronic paper, mm -hmm. but it can roll in and out. Mm -hmm. And there was a movie that came out about 10 years ago where their portable devices, they would just open them. Yeah. And, it, and the, the film would come out, and then when they put it away, they'd fold away. Yeah, but, but what I think is going to happen before that is, is you know, because now they're coming out with, like, the uh, Google Glass, where you've got the, the technology that you wear on your head. Well, they're already starting to experiment with actually miniaturizing that to the point where they can put it into, like, contact lenses. Wow. And once you get to that point, then, you know, you've got your virtual heads-up display. So then you won't need to unscroll anything. You just look straight ahead. I wonder if it'll burn in an image you know? permanently. Like the old screen <laughs> just to yeah, actually, actually, I knew a woman one time who was one of these people that was just, you know, the uh, uh, home shopping channel uh, zealot, and she got she left it on so long and actually burned the image of HSC on her, on her yeah. <laughs> plasma TV. <laughs> anyway, the next thing I want to talk about was uh, texting. And texting's been around for quite a while, and... People keep predicting that it's going to go away, sort of like a mail, but actually, it's, yeah, it's growing. Bigger all the time. It's growing. I mean, people are so addicted to texting, it's not even funny. And it, even the impact of all these laws that they're passing, you know, nationwide. Yeah, where speaking you of impact, where you text <laughs> while you're driving, yeah. you know, we, we remember when we were doing um, One Spark, that right. we, were, we were walking down the, the street, and, and most of these streets were closed off except the one intersection. Mm -hmm. There was a cop car sitting right across the street. I remember a lady was texting and she ran right through the light, damn near killed all of us. Right. And not only didn't she notice, the cop's like, eh, he missed her. <laughs> she missed him. <laughs> well, again, texting is not slowing down in any way, shape, or form. I mean, they no. passed the laws in a lot of these different states. I still see people, I mean, you can't drive a thousand yards without seeing somebody text. I mean, it's just not going to happen. And people are addicted to texting. The younger you are, the more you're oh, addicted to it. And, and there's really good reason for it because, again, if you call somebody, they can ignore the call because they can see your picture on right. the phone and say, oh, I don't want to talk to them right now. But they'll answer a text, which is amazing to me. <laughs> they'll answer a text. It's almost like the old uh, CB radio type of stuff, right. except it's in good writing. Yeah. And for a good buddy. <laughs> um, you were talking about got, drones. Got your ears on. There you go. <laughs> we were talking about drones earlier and, you know, Amazon talking about mm. they're going to be using them for delivery and all that. And really, a lot of that is hype. I mean... I don't call that drone delivery. I call that drone PR. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're yeah, doing is. PR stuff. But, like I said, they actually spawned an idea that might end up bearing fruit because, like I said, Google has the autonomous vehicles. Right. And it's not going to be... And I've actually seen robots that they've used in, like, garden centers and things that can pick up, right. like, the planters and move them around and things like that. So how hard would it be for the truck to pull up in your driveway and the little droid to come out, pick up the box, come up the door? Right. I remember going to... So, and when you get companies like... FedEx and things like that that have all these trucks and all these drivers. If there was a way for them to automate that, they're going to find a way to do it. It's just inevitable. What I see people using drones a lot for right now, especially next year, yeah. is if you go to like the indoor stadium game yeah. and they have the flying drone around mm -hmm. in there and it'll be delivering free presents, which is a PR type of mm -hmm. thing. One of the things I haven't seen drones use would be, you know, if you go to the beach, you see the banners flying back and forth on the beach. That's a perfect job for a drone. Yeah, well, the only reason that they don't allow is because of FAA restrictions, right. so they'd already be doing that. Right. Okay, because the thing is, when you're in that airspace, you're sharing airspace with helicopters and light planes and everything else, and you have to have a pretty sophisticated drone because it's got to it's got to know where where the traffic is coming from, and so does air traffic control. But if control. they fly it only 500 feet, they could do it. No, because helicopters will fly that low. Sometimes you'll see the police helicopters and things. Like I said, you could come into conflict with. Yeah with an aircraft very quickly and it would be very ugly for everybody not only the the pilot but also anybody on the ground you know because that but they have the, i saw on on kickstarter not too long ago where they actually have a drone now that can i mean one of these little drones quadcopters that can lift 100 pounds right. so they're getting there and there's one guy that's literally come up with basically a quadcopter on steroids where it's now able to lift it's got a little cockpit and instead of having the big you know the one big Blade over top of your head with the helicopter. Got a bunch of little ones. Got a bunch of little ones, and they're actually trying to get certification for that. So it's, yeah, it's I just saw a matter one, of time. I saw one at Tiger Direct. It's yeah. actually like in a ball, mm -hmm. and the blades are protected inside the yeah. ball, so and they can fly around and carry a bunch of stuff. But again, the whole drone thing for right now is going to be for PR work and advertising and stuff like that, and for doing you know publicity stunts. Oh, yeah, because I mean they're using to shoot movies now and right. everything. You know, I mean a lot of the things you see that used to be helicopters. You know, it's a lot more economical to do it using a little drone. Right. Especially when you're just trying to do location shoots or drive overs and stuff like that. Yeah, in um, fact, our producer has a little, one of those things, don't you, Nash? Mm -hmm, yeah. He uses it every now and then. So They're pretty sophisticated. So even, even, the, even the, uh, the consumer versions are getting more and more sophisticated. Well, the last two items that I wanted to bring up, and I think 
you know, we're we're getting ready to launch our next book, mm -hmm. uh, Working with the Wind. Right. And book marketing is becoming a huge thing, and a lot Gigantic. of it has to do with because it's you can do it. Oh I mean, yeah. Before it was huge obstacles. If you wanted sure. to become an author, right. you had to jump through all kinds of. Oh, you had to have an agent. Right. You, know. you had to please right. these big companes in nineteen hundred and seventy. At halftime, you couldn't. Right. So you were you were done. You know, a lot of people wrote books that right. just they're gathering dust on the shelves. Well, today, right. Barnes and Noble, Amazon, here I come. Right. You know. And not only that, you to to put e-books out, it, the cost of manufacturing is nil. Well, even even traditional books, even if you right. wanted to, to print a traditional book today, you got printing on demand. Right. You can print so you don't onesies. have to you don't have to throw ten twenty thousand dollars at the wall and hope the hell you can get it back. Right. You can print onesies. Yeah. And Pretty the other amazing. thing I think that's really neat is, I mean, for, like for our clients, when, when we're doing ghostwriting and blogging right. and stuff like that for them, if you produce enough material, you got a book. Mm -hmm. Then all True. you just got to do is organize it and then publish it. Well, yeah, and we've even talked about a reason to publish it because today, you know, if you publish a book that you've written out of your blogs, it's not only do you have bragging rights, but it becomes an, another another marketing note for right. you. And, and guess what? You can take the information... QR codes and things like that from your website, from videos, right. and actually embed them in the book. And so it becomes a multimedia book. And Even again, it's printed on paper. People have been using white papers yeah. and documents like that as incentives for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. But now you can do it with ebooks pretty easily. So mm -hmm. that's that's a big deal that, again, smart businesses are going to be using it because it's, it's much cheaper to produce that ebook the first time and then you can give it away as many times as you want. And if you look at what HubSpot does, they're, they're content producers, right? Because that's how they, they create their pool technology to get people to come to them. Mm -hmm. So the last item before we run out of time here is reputation management. I mean, again, we started talking about this in 2013 primarily because it really came to the forefront because businesses were discovering that somebody could anonymously go and complain about them. Right. You know, and, and that part of that is the social media revolution that's causing that where... If you were pro providing poor service, mm -hmm. you could get away with it in the past. Well, now you can't get away with it very easily. But worse than that, you could be doing good service, right. and your competitors or somebody else can come up from behind you and, and attack you and say that you're doing bad. Well, and it's not just the negative stuff. I mean, also, one of the big you know, drivers today is having positive publicity. A lot of people yeah. still don't have a mechanism for that, but one of the things we try to train our clients in is how to get your, your customers to put reviews out there because... Yeah. If you if you amass enough reviews, like you said, people today before they're going to do business with somebody, they want to check you out. So why not, you know, feed that need? Right. Studies show that that businesses will look at ten or fifteen different things before they actually make a decision today. Mm -hmm. Consumers more than that, twelve. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, they're going to go to that Best Buy and look at all those star reviews on there. They're going right. to go and look on people up on Google Plus when they do that search. If your line item comes up and has a bunch of gold stars by it, people are going to click on you. That's right. And if you're not having, if you don't have a mechanism in place to generate those stars, yeah. you're, you're missing, missing out on a out. big opportunity. You're missing Absolutely. out on a huge Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. The other thing is, though, people have to understand they have to have a mechanism in place to manage their reputation, and they have to care about their reputation mm -hmm. because if they don't, they could lose business very quickly. And again, bad press travels ten times faster than good press. So you have to have a mechanism to go out there and generate that good press on a regular basis. Uh, those are the main things that I wanted to talk about. I know we're going to talk about next week, I believe, our show. The social media marketing predictions. The social so media marketing predictions, which is a whole other animal right. altogether. And then we have a show that we'll talk about new tech predictions. That's right. All the new cool stuff coming out mm -hmm. for 2014. So we should thank our, uh, our sponsors. sponsors. That's right. We've got Vie. Via E-Cigs. The e-cigarette e company that's... Uh, Really founded by one of the, the main Industry, people. Who's, right, one of the industry pioneers. Yeah, and again, the big thing about them is their quality is really second to none in the industry. And these people really care about helping people. They're not about making a bunch of money with e-cigarettes. Mm -hmm. They're about helping people get what they want without having all the bad stuff that, that regular cigarettes come with. Um, the other sponsor, of course, is... Tub King. Tub King and mm -hmm. their senior, senior tub. They also have... A pretty huge sale going on right now at the end of the year. Um, I know their their tubs start at eighteen ninety five for for the walk ins. Right, right. Well, and, and like I said, if you go to uh, workingwebtowin dot com, there's uh, buttons for both of those. Both right. of my banners on the site, so you can click on there and go over there and yeah. check them out. But like you said, right now there's some really good uh, Christmas specials. Yeah. So take advantage of it. And other than that, um, I'm trying to think if we have anything else. 
You got anything else? No, I think that pretty much covers what we set out to do today. You know, uh, and, and like I said, it's just you got to think of the fact that if, if things have come this far since Isaac Asimov's day, just yeah. think of what it's going to be like in 50 years from now. Wow. Be it's going to be really scary. Pretty magical. There, there will there will be the robots sitting here in the studio doing the show for us. Okay, I guarantee you, because they're getting pretty close to that stuff. Robotics with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to have Nash, Nash whip up some robots and put them in our chairs real quick. So, having said that, until next time, keep, keep working, working with women. women.